This episode is sponsored by ButcherBox. With ButcherBox, you can get high quality meat delivered directly to your door. Choose from 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, and more sourced from farmers and fishermen dedicated to doing the right thing. Today I'm using ButcherBox to make my best approximation of rotisserie style chicken at home. For a limited time, new members receive one 30 ounce bone in tomahawk steak in their first box free. For more info, head to the link in the description. All right, so once your chicken is fully defrosted, talking one to two nights in the refrigerator or four to five hours in an ice water bath, now we can optionally dry brine the chicken, that is lightly season it all over with kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper and leave it on a wire rack uncovered in the fridge overnight. This both deeply flavors the chicken and helps to dry out the skin, resulting in a pronouncedly crispier bird. The next day and with the oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, preferably with convection, I'm gonna give the chicken a very small rub down in light olive oil until the fat renders out of the skin, this is gonna give us a head start on crispness. Now, if you have a weak disposition or if you are a miniature child, I would ask you to leave the room because this beer can's about to go where the sun don't shine. A mostly empty beer can because contrary to what you might think, the beauty of beer can chicken lies not in the beer, but in the can, which props the poultry up at an advantageous angle. I'm leaving about four ounces of beer in the pint-sized beer can, which I'm also gonna supplement with a couple cloves of crushed garlic and a bay leaf, which is gonna hopefully steam a little bit of flavor into the chicken from within. Speaking of within, that's where this beer can's headed. Press down thoroughly to make sure the can is lodged way up in there. And my cookware of choice for this application is actually gonna be a 12 inch cast iron pan, and you'll see why. And with that, this entire contraption is headed into the oven, where it's gonna get a head start on cooking in the lower center sector of your oven while we prep our optional vegetables. Now, my intention here was to recreate the rotisserie chickens that I got in Paris. Golden brown, juicy, and served with potatoes roasted in its dripping fat. But why stop at potatoes? when we can include all manner of root vegetables. So in addition to some halved miniature Yukons, some peeled and depending on their size, halved shallots, and a handful of crushed and peeled garlic cloves. And then at the very last minute, I remembered about mushrooms. My Taki or Hen of the Woods mushrooms are kind of having a moment right now. And with good reason, they fry or roast up nice and crisp with a good meaty texture and flavor. So I'm tossing all these vegetables with a conservative drizzle of light olive oil and a liberal sprinkling of kosher salt. And then once the chicken has reached about the 20 minute mark, we're gonna remove it from the oven and pour all those vegetables into the nicely preheated cast iron pan. Things might be a little crowded in there, but that's okay for now. This chicken's gonna need about another hour to roast, and every 20 minutes, we're gonna take it out and give things a stir. If timing is on your side, hopefully the chicken and the vegetables will finish cooking at the same time. But if not, don't worry about it. Either element can rest while the other finishes cooking, in my case, the chicken, which works out pretty nicely because the chicken should rest for about 20 minutes at room temperature uncovered, which is gonna help it retain moisture once sliced. So I'm popping the poultry off its perch, giving the vegetables a stir and all that chicken fat, and then returning them to their rightful place in the oven. Now from the chicken, I'm going to remove the beer can, which has served its purpose as a pedestal. Unfortunately, you might notice that my drumsticks did not get much color in the oven, so I'm not above doing a little food styling. As I always say, every morning to myself in the mirror. Crispy skin by any means necessary. Now, once the vegetables are done roasting, you can scoop them out and optionally build a pan sauce slash jus out of the fat in the pan. Simply add a tablespoon of flour to the fat over medium heat, allow it to cook for one minute before adding a half cup of chicken stock and the remaining strained beer from the roasting can. Let that simmer over medium heat for three to five minutes until ever just so slightly thickened. Kill the heat and then mount with two tablespoons of butter. Whisk constantly until melted, emulsified, and velvety. That then all there is left to do is serve up the ultimate one pan meal. Jewel vegetables caramelized in chicken fat topped with my closest approximation to a rotisserie bird at home. Served with a steaming jus if you did your extra credit. From there, you just gotta carve things up as desired, maybe not right on top of the vegetables. There you go, Andy, your whole table is a carving board. Might as well act like it. Slice, sauce, and serve. And there you have it, an easy, elegant way to get a holiday-ready meal on the table in less than two hours. Made even easier by today's sponsor, ButcherBox. With ButcherBox, you can stock your freezer with high-quality meat and seafood, making cooking and meal planning easier. You choose your box type and frequency, and they'll ship your order for free in an eco-friendly box. For a limited time, new members receive one 30-ounce bone-in tomahawk steak in their first box free. For more info, head to the link in the description. <laughs> 